Sure. So our top pick is Micron. Uh, we call them the good cron. The bad cron is obviously Omicron. You don't want to go anywhere near that. But we like the good cron, uh, Micron. We think they have the most earnings upside in semis. Micron. And is there a fundamental reason for that? Or you just think the stock has held up better or both? Uh, yeah. So as far as the uh, earnings upside, you know, inflation is not just in food and gas. Uh, it's also in semiconductors. Micron makes memory. That's the most, I guess you would call it price sensitive or inflation sensitive area in semis. Uh, so we think that they have the most upside to earnings throughout the year. Is there a glut possibly forming in the entire sector? Uh, yeah, but I could I would say that you've been seeing that forming for maybe a year. And these inventory builds can last a lot longer than you think. So we do think that the um, that the upturn is getting long in the tooth. Uh, but I think the absolute earliest you could see some sort of inventory correction would be second half of this year. Now, most semiconductor companies are literally sold out for the rest of this year. So I think consensus is some sort of inventory correction in the first half of next year. So we have plenty of room uh, between now and then. And, you know, we're, we're on record as saying we think earnings go up for almost every semiconductor company with one notable exception here during earnings season. These, um, these sell-offs, these sort of panic sell-offs before earnings are, are very, very typical. We actually had two 10% sell-offs in semis uh, in the first three or four months last year. So this is just kind of business as usual before we get to the numbers. But the levels for the SMH have been so unusual. I mean, you look at these charts and basically the ETF went from whatever it was, 140 pre-pandemic, maybe less than that to more than double that post-pandemic. And the question remains, does it stay at this higher plateau or not? What's going to be the tell for you? Sure. So I, I really think that it's, you know, it's show me time, it's earnings. And as long as the earnings go higher, the consensus estimates go higher. Uh, when these companies report over the next three or four weeks, I think that that is, you know, historically for the last several quarters, that's what's driven them. I do think you're seeing a little bit of uh, multiple compression across the market, uh, given higher rates, and my stocks tend to have higher than uh, than average multiples. So there's probably some, you know, sort of multiple compression voodoo going on with semis. But again, the sell-off before earnings is is nothing new. Um, I don't know if you have the chart in, in front of you or those of you at home, but you can see that these sell-offs before earnings are fairly typical. I just think it's being exacerbated by a little bit of multiple compression out there and the fact that we're in the beginning of the year. And so you do like Micron. I see that you do like Intel. Think, think they could actually beat this quarter? Uh, yeah, so um, Intel is a little bit of a shorter-term call. My space, as you can all see, and as you pointed out, tends to be very volatile. So our 12-month rating on Intel is neutral, but we just put a short-term, what we call a catalyst watch on it. Uh, and that's just because of the strength in the PC space. Everybody is ostensibly going back into the office. And when you go back into the office, you need to upgrade the PCs and the servers. That was very, very strong throughout Q4. So we think Intel gives an update uh, when they report earnings. I believe it's next week. They beat whatever guidance they gave for Q4. They raised guidance for a little bit this year. Intel also has an analyst day in mid-February. And we think that the stock runs into the analyst day. And again, you know, sentiment plays an important role in semis. And uh, Intel had a very poor uh, update in October. So we think that the sentiment was very low on Intel uh, going into the beginning of the year. That's one of the reasons why we think the stock. I'm just going to squeeze one more in. What would you do with the darlings, NVIDIA and AMD? Yeah, squeeze in all you like. Um, so uh, in, NVIDIA, the best growth story in semis. So we're still positive there. Again, any sort of multiple compression uh, is going to hit them uh, you know, worse than anybody else. But I would expect they report earnings a little bit later than most semis. They'll be fine. Uh, AMD is a bit of a different story. Um, you know, we foresee some sort of pullback or cooling off of the PC market uh, in the second half of this year. One of the reasons why we have a neutral rating uh, on Intel, and that's going to impact AMD as well. We've had two straight years of 10% growth in PCs. Before that, we had seven years of, on average, zero growth. So wow. some PC space has to come back down to earth, in our opinion. And that'll be very interesting for how long it, it remains dormant at that point as well. But that's a question for another time. Chris, thanks for walking through all of this. It's great to have you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.